World News Today, brought to you by the Admiral Corporation, makers of Admiral Radio, America's smart set. Large forces of American bombers were out again today, pounding Europe into shape for invasion. Now, here once again is Doug Edwards. American bombers were over France again today. For this news and an interview with a flying fortress crew chief from Liberty, Kentucky, Admiral takes you to CBS London, Larry LeSueur reporting. The coming of spring has brought payoff time to the exponents of victory through air power. The air battle must be won before the land battle can begin. And the American Air Force in Britain is in the midst of the greatest campaign it may ever fight, breaking the German Air Force. Again today, for the 20th time this month, America's fortresses and liberators have challenged the Luftwaffe. Our planes come home at dusk riddled by flak and cannon fire. But they must be fit to fly again at dawn. Behind this American record for sustained operations are the almost forgotten men, the ground crews, the mechanics who keep them flying. Tonight we have with us Master Sergeant Omer James of Liberty, Kentucky. Two years ago, Sergeant James ran a general store on the edge of the bluegrass. Today he's crew chief of a flying fortress. He and his crew of mechanics have been cited by Bomber Command for sending out their fortress on over 40 combat missions without a single mechanical failure. Sergeant James, what shift do you work up at the airfield? We don't work any shift, Larry. We work until the job is finished. Generally, we start at dusk when the bombers return and work through until dawn next day. Once I work 72 hours straight. Gosh, any strikes at your field, Sergeant? No. The only time we ever complain is when a fort returns without dropping its bombs. Well, what's an average day like in the life of a fortress mechanic, Sergeant James? Well, I think you'd call it more night than day. When the forts go out, we go to bed. And when they come home, we go to work. Work all night, just using flashlights and portable lights. And boy, it was pretty unpleasant on those English fields this winter. Yeah, I'll bet that cold went right through you. No, the cold didn't go through us. Some of it stayed inside. But now that spring is here, we can work much faster. There's more daylight now. We had so much experience in the last nine months that we can do in three hours what used to take us a day. See, what's the name of your particular fortress, Sergeant James? Well, it used to be called a Screaming Red. Luckiest ship on the field. Went out on 45 missions, and none of her combat crew ever got a scratch. But she didn't come back from the 46th. That was Berlin. We waited out on the field until dusk for about an hour after the rest of the planes were home. And then we heard the bad news. Flack got her over the big city. I can, can't tell you how I felt. We were all pretty silent after nine months. Screaming red and a crew were gone. We're all sorry, Sergeant James, but we know that it costs men and planes to break the Luftwaffe, and that soon you'll have another chance to break the American Air Force record for keeping them flying. We return you now to New York. In closing, we'd like to remind you that Prime Minister Churchill of Great Britain will speak to the world from London this afternoon. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. We have been delivered from the horrors of an invasion at a time when we were almost unarmed. We have endured without swerving or failing the utmost fury which Hitler could cast upon us from the air. And now the tables are turned. And those who sought to destroy their enemies by the most fearful form of warfare are themselves reeling and writhing under the prodigious blows of British and American air power. We had ourselves a large air force in this island this time last year. We have a larger one today. But besides all that, our American allies have now definitely overtaken and outnumbered us in the mighty air force they have established here. The combination in crew brotherhood of these two air forces, either of which is nearly as large in numbers and in power much greater than the whole air force of Germany, aided as it will be by another allied air force in Italy, almost as large, which is now uh, established there. These together will produce results in these coming months 
which I shall not attempt to measure in advance, but which will certainly be of enormous advantage to the cause of the Allies. Not only have the British and Americans this great preponderance in numbers, which enables them to send out a thousand bombers as often as the enemy is able to send a hundred against us, but also by sharing all our secrets with one another, we have won the leadership in the marvels of radar, both for attack and defense. Surveying these famous and massive events, land, sea, and air, in the war waged by the two Western allies, Britain and the United States, against Hitlerism, we are entitled, nay bound, to be encouraged, to be thankful, and to resolve to do better than we have ever done before. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. 